I know, I know, I know. 
you, Lord. And we don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What people think. deny you before my father. I don't want him to deny me before God because when my sin goes up before the Lord and Jesus steps in and says, I plead the blood. I love the Lord. Jesus. Go shut up. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. The word of God says when a man speaks in an unknown tongue, he speaks not to man but unto God. And Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit that kept working on me until I came all the way in. No compromise. You can't have one foot in the world or one foot in the kingdom. The kingdom is not the church. The kingdom is God's rule and reign in the earth. The kingdom is a system superimposed on an ungodly system. So you might be in this world, but not of this world, if you're of the kingdom. If you understand what I'm speaking of, just post amen. I'm ready to preach. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. I'd like to give honor to my beautiful wife, First Lady, uh, for, as they say in the word, holding me down, but she, also, but she actually lifts me up. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Us getting together was not an uh, 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 easy task because me living at the time in California and her living uh, in Massachusetts, uh, the chances of us ever meeting were slim to none but there came a time when I had to renew my license and um, before they let me renew my license I discovered I had $92 or $94 9400 let me fix that dollars and parking tickets and excise tax from when I lived in Boston and I was like well how was that possible but I found out later that some of my brothers, um, God bless them, but when they were given the task when I was on tour and, and when I was traveling and I was living down in the south end on Clarendon and Columbus, some of you, some of y'all from Boston, you know what that means. That means that on certain days you can't park on the street. So I had um, membership at the Marriott Health Club um, just about a block away uh, in Copley Square. So. Uh, three of my cars could be parked there on uh, the day that there was street cleaning so I wouldn't get tickets. Well, of course, my lazy brothers, they had no problem driving the Benz and the Beamer and the Jeep. Um, one even flipped it over on the freeway and left it in New Bedford. And I got charged with leaving the scene of an accident, even though I was in California. But anyway, I forgave them. My point is, I had to come and straighten out some tickets. I, I was going on a ticket paying tour. I had to go uh, to Brockton, I had to go to Boston, and I had to go to West Roxbury. Three different courts altogether was almost $10,000 in tickets and excise tax, and I had to pay. Uh, word to the wise, if you want to help someone with a car, you can help them and make sure they put it in their name. Amen? But anyway, 
um, I went to a particular court with my cousin Fred, and um, there was a, a beautiful young lady there. Um, and um, I met her when I was paying a ticket. Well, that was in 2009. It wasn't until about 2019, thereabout, that um, I met the same woman again, but this time on Facebook. And I thought she was attractive. And, and, and um, I had heard from my cousin that she was a woman of God. And sometimes it's just the right thing that's said or the right look that, that, that it gets you hooked. She sent me an inbox. Now, I always get inboxes from, from uh, females uh, and a couple of males, unfortunately. But I got an um, inbox. And it simply said, I want you to lay hands on me. Man, that was just the right amount of flirting for me. It wasn't over the top. It wasn't like vulgar. Nothing, but I thought it was cute. It was sassy. But I got the point. So make a long story short, fast forward. I told her, I said, if we are together, what's happening, Gary? If we're together for at least a year while we date, I'll marry you in a year. Because in a year's time, it's enough time for you to get to see the highs and lows. It's enough time for you to get to see them with and without makeup. And she hardly wears any, so, you know, it, it was very pleasant to see her any time of the day. And it gets uh, very easy to discern if they really love God for real. Well, the backstory, I wasn't planning on sharing this this morning, but the backstory is she had been, it was prophesied to her when she was much younger that she would marry a prophet in her church and she said no I'm not either because she grew up in a church her mother was an evangelist her father was a minister in his own right and a very powerful one I, I hear uh, my, my uh, uh, heavenly father-in-law and mother-in-law uh, and I guess because growing up in, in, in that environment the last thing you want to do as a youngster is you know keep going down that road but anyway um, the rest is history thus you have the first lady of Domi, um, Miss Sonia McFadden Robinson. Because my government name is Dwayne Omar Robinson, y'all know that. But from my music days, they know me as Dwayne Omar, so that's why I go by probably Dwayne Omar. But eventually, no Diddy, but I'll be um, transitioning to include uh, my whole name, so there'll be no. It ain't married. Why is her last name? You know, because some people are just silly. Amen? Amen. But anyway, let me get into this word. If we are totally honest, when we give a testimony, there's some parts of our testimony that we never tell. <laughs> let that marinate for a minute. Even myself, there's some parts about a testimony that you just leave it between you and God, God you know. Like when people talk about hitting rock bottom, they don't really tell you everything. Nor should they. Because some people have a spirit of gossip. So, so, so uh, may you be discerning of who to share your testimony with. Amen? Amen. I'm not saying you lie, but I'm just telling you that some people don't tell the whole story. Am I right about it? If I'm talking to the right people this morning, just go ahead and post. You right, prophet. Um, although it's it's not supposed to be about us. It's supposed to be about uh, sharing how good God has been to us. There's still stuff that the muck and the mire, there's something that just came to mind that I know I walked through when I was in Chicago hanging out not because I went there for this purpose, but I was introduced to Bishop Don Magic Juan when I was in Chicago. And there's some company that I was in that I ain't sharing that part of the testimony, amen, because I'm no longer there. But my, 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 my point of it is there's some things that you just say, well, it's God you know, amen. He's been good to me, amen, 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 amen. Um, and, and because I, I, I'm a man of God, there are people that share dark secrets with me that I would never repeat. If you notice, I never tell anybody else's story for them. 
If they give me the permission to say X, Y, Z, I'll do so. If I call out somebody that I see in the spirit or whatever, it's usually somebody I don't know. But I never share someone's secret. I would never do it. Because I know how dangerous this internet is nowadays. You can destroy uh, careers. You can destroy uh, and, uh, and tear down people's self-esteem. And some people can't handle it and even commit suicide. So I'm very careful with what I say concerning uh, the confidentiality of other people. There's people that have shared things with me that I'll never share. Why are you saying that? Well, because of the same reason why... All of us keep certain parts of our testimony to ourselves. Number one reason is fear that people will treat you differently if they knew where you came from. Amen. Uh, another reason is fear that they may stop respecting you. Uh, another reason uh, uh, that you might lose your status in a particular club uh, or that folks will cut you off. But let me give you the word of God. Amen. Because mm -hmm. God does not see as men sees. If you turn with me to Romans chapter 2, verse 11, in the New King James, Romans 2, 11, in the NKJV, New King James Version, it reads, For there is no respecter of persons with God. The way uh, I believe King James reads it is God is no respecter of persons. What does it mean? He's not going to sit a homeless man in the back of the church and a wealthy man in the front of the church as people would. He's not going to do that. He said, whosoever will, let them come. Amen. Amen. God is not going to sit an ex-rapist, an ex-rapist in the back of the church and sit an ex-pimp in the front of the church. He's not going to do that. He said, Whoever so, whosoever will, let them come. See, the church is supposed to be for the spiritually sick folk to build them up, to deliver them. And hopefully, if it's structured right, disciple them throughout their journey of life. Because remember, this is the short part of life. This is the short. This, this is, let me, let me give you a little illustration. Let's look at the top of this cloth as linear. And this is when you're born. And this is when you die. But you really don't die. What happens is that this earth suit folds up. And now you get a new body. And if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, your life eternal with God just gets blissful. Whatever you didn't have in this life that you could have had, but you didn't have any knowledge of it, so therefore you didn't have it, but you love the Lord, you go forever to live with Him. And in my Father's house there are many mansions. I'm telling you it's not a figment of, it's not allegory, and it's not just um, a uh, ethereal, concept of an ethereal being somewhere floating out this no 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 this is a literal city this is a, a literal reality and you get the benefit of your full person what do you mean by that prophet in other words it's not just three-dimensional whatever you can taste here you can taste 10 times more there maybe even a million times more there. maybe even a billion times whatever you could feel here you could feel a billion times more there whatever you could see here you could see even the colors more vibrantly that everything is all good and you get to experience it for eternity but if your name is not written in the lamb's book of life you are separated from god because it is written in revelations and whosoever's name was not found Written in the Lamb's Book of Life, they were cast into the lake of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What does that mean? I mean, you're forever separated from God. I wasn't planning on going there, not yet. But let me go ahead. Let's go to 2 Timothy 1.8. Holy Ghost preach, Holy Ghost preach. 2 Timothy 1, 
verse 8 in the King James Version, and it reads, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. This is Apostle Paul preaching. You know, he's thrown in jail for, for preaching the gospel, basically. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. In other words, if you're going to rock with God for eternity, you got to rock with him while you're here too. That means if folks want to call you judgmental or homophobic or um, uh, any of their other names that they call believers, you know, um, uh, radical, uh, extreme right, or any kind of other name the devil can come up with when really he's talking about himself because they're the radical ones and they're the extreme ones. It's a very extreme to want to put tampons in a boy's bathroom. It's very extreme to want to uh, allow legal abortions up until the ninth month, up until after the baby is born and then the doctor and the parent or the mother have a consultation and decide should the baby live or not. What God says that's okay. Not the one I serve. What God says it's okay to mutilate uh, a young uh, woman in her adolescence before she finds out who she is to uh, amputate her breasts and put her on, on hormone therapy to try. You can't turn a male into a female or a female into a male. God created what he created and that's it. All you can do is pervert it. All you can do is mutilate it. But anyone who believes that's okay, uh, they're not serving the God I serve. What God is that? Remind me not to buy none of his books. I promote none of his politicians. I promote none of his preachers. What God is that? Oh, that'll preach. I hear that as a future message. What God is that? I can tell you what it is. It's a God of your own making. It's not the God of the Bible. Anyway, let me keep it moving. Paul is saying, don't be ashamed of where God brought you from. Now, most of the saints of old, they say, God brought me a mighty long way. My mom is in heaven. But if she was giving her testimony now, she probably would share a little bit more than she shared back in the day because she was ashamed. Although she was born, and I don't even know what city in Mississippi, but she was born in Mississippi. She grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, so she told everybody she was born in Memphis because they made fun of people who were of darker complected skin. And on top of that, you were uh, born in Mississippi. Um, Mississippi, even many parts of that to this day, still forgot that slavery is over. She um, had a sixth grade education. She wanted to further her education. And she did a lot of things, and, and, and only the grace of God, she went that far. Why? Because when she went to apply at schools, they said, we don't teach niggas here. And um, God rest her soul, but my grandmother wasn't much of an encouragement to her. So she shared some things. to. If she were to share her whole testimony, she'd talk about how she was um, uh, molested, or I'll, I'll even say sexually assaulted, by one of my grandmother's boyfriends. And when my mother went to her about it, she acted like she didn't believe my mother. That ought to make you feel some kind of way. So that's why when my mother tells that she moved uh, away from Memphis, Tennessee at around age 13, 14, uh, and took a bus, a Greyhound bus to Massachusetts and found in the ad of a newspaper a job to go work as a maid for the Kennedys. It, it, it was, it was um, the grace of God that led her to Massachusetts and she made it there safely. If she were to share her old testimony, she might talk about how she lived in a, a basement apartment and um, even though there was locks on the door, she would have dreams at night of a man standing with a black overcoat with his face uh, blurred out and a black hat standing at her door, just waiting for her to get caught slipping one time, waiting for her to leave the door unlocked one time, and leave the window unlocked one time so he can come on in. Uh, she would share her whole testimony. She would tell you about how she uh, thought about killing herself because she figured she was worthless. Her cousins talked to her, said, your mama didn't love you. That's why she gave you away. And you're too black and you're too ugly. Now, anybody seen our daughters? You know our daughters are beautiful. And my mother looked just like my daughter, Krista. 
looked just like her. And Portia too. I thought Portia looked just like my mother until Krista was born. She looked just like my mother, like a young version of my mother. And not one person ever said that Krista, Krista wasn't beautiful. So my point is, the devil will get into your psyche if you let him. He'll get to your children and start lying to them. You're ugly. You're no good. See, I won't even... This ain't even in my notes, but I'm being led by the Spirit. There's somebody watching me that your self-esteem has been crushed because of an annihilation. Ah, okay. I'm prophesying now. Your self-esteem has been crushed because of a past relationship. And even though you've moved on in your heart, you haven't moved on. Before I get off this morning, I'm going to help you divorce yourself from that spirit. Break the chain of that bondage. And you know who you are. I know you. And you know I know who you are. But I'm not going to say your name. See, some things don't change until you change on the inside. You can change your, your, your face, uh, makeup. You can change your hair. Uh, you can change your clothes. But nothing changes in your circumstances if you still view yourself the same way. Hmm. Let me give you... A little more scripture. Matthew 10, 32. Before I go there, there's someone else that's going through what you've already been through and you've conquered. And they will see the love of God by knowing your testimony. That he who have ears, let them hear. They may be on your job, they may be at your school, they may be in your church. Because unfortunately... Not all preachers are preaching the word of God. I'm not saying someone can't preach. I'm not saying they have a, an oratorical gift. I'm not saying that they can't bring the house down. I'm saying they're not hearing from God. Therefore, they're not preaching the word of God. And they're all on their way to hell. Did he just say all preachers are not hearing? No, that's not what I said. I said those that are not hearing from God. Because if you're not hearing from God... That means whatever you're preaching is not a doctrine of the word. It's a doctrine of demons. And if you're preaching a doctrine of demons, then you go to hell. I don't care how many crosses you got around your neck. I don't care how many uh, letters you got behind your name, how many doctrines of divinities, and how many bishops and apostles and, and whatever you got, whatever the man named you means nothing. I see you, Shakima. So don't worry what pe about what people will think, because let me tell you, newsflash, they already made up their mind about you anyway, and they're already going to think what they're going to think, no matter what you do. The Bible says, in Matthew 10, 32 and 33, New King James, I'm going to inject, before I read the scripture, the Holy Spirit is not done with this, 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 uh, this pit stop right here. I am going to release an anointing to inject a renewed self-esteem in all who that will receive it this morning. So make sure you stay to the end. Mm. Matthew 10, 32 and 33 in the New King James says, Therefore... Whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Verse 33. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. The Bible says that our enemy Satan, Beelzebub, the devil is the accuser of the brethren day and night. He often petitions God for rights to souls. One of yours, like he did Job. One of yours who you have a hedge of protection around. One of yours who you've been uh, um, blessing and protecting is living a double life. I should have access to them because they're following me more than they're following you. And if the devil is telling the truth based upon spiritual law, God has to say, as a righteous God, 
I have to allow what they've allowed. They've opened themselves up. One of your, your daughters uh, uh, just got pregnant by a man she's not married to and she had abortion behind his back and, and, and I should have right to, to curse her womb. And if the enemy is telling the truth, even though he's a liar, but he can tell some truth, then God has to allow that curse to go into effect. Why? Because it was already lingering in the first place, but when the covering of God is removed, you suffer the divine disregard. In other words, I love to keep them covered, but because of their disobedience, I can't remain God and keep my grace on, so I have to remove my grace. And then the devil pounces. So what I'm saying is this. You need a God who Jesus is confessing your name before. You need a relationship with an advocate who understands spiritual law. Jesus is like an attorney, the world's greatest attorney. You can't afford him because he's more than a billion dollars an hour. But he provided his service free, like a public defender. I never heard nobody say that, but this is in my spirit. So he says, if you confess me before men, when the devil comes to accuse you, I'll confess you before my father. Think of a heavenly courtroom. God's a righteous judge. With God, you're either guilty or not guilty. There's no in between. There's no, well, God, um, this is a more softer, more gentler gospel. This is a gospel of inclusion. No, 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 no. You're either holy or you're not holy. You're either walking in darkness or you're walking in light. There's no in between. God says, because if you're lukewarm, he'll spill you out of his mouth. You'll make God throw up if you're lukewarm. Be hot or cold. So you need a God who listens to Jesus. So if you confess him before men, he said, I'll confess you before my father. When the enemy comes in and say, yeah, but he did this. Yeah, but she did this. And Jesus steps up and saying, I confess the blood over First lady, I confess the blood over Shekinah. I confess the blood. I confess the blood. I plead the blood. And through the blood of Jesus, payment was made for all eternity. That work was finished. What do you mean, prophet? Because the Bible says the wages, the payment for sin is death. And when God says death, he ain't just talking about leaving his body. He's talking about when you dead, you go to the second death. And that's total separation away from God. Forever, eternally. Let that marinate. So if you confess Jesus before men, he said, I'll confess you before my father. What does that mean? You know when the Bible speaks of the judgment and when he said there will be many in that day that would say, but father, but father, didn't I pray in your name? Didn't I cast out devils? Didn't I heal the sick? And he'll say, let me look in the book. To open up the pages of the book. And if your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, he'll say, depart from me for I never knew you. Why would he not know you? It's because you have denied him before men and he has denied you before the Father. He, he failed to confess your name before God and God keeps great records. But if you confess his name before men, he said, I'll confess you before my Father. There are too many people, especially people of, of our uh, uh, black, African-American colored culture who think they've evolved beyond the Bible. They say, well, I'm not uh, religious, but I'm spiritual. Well, let me tell you something. Jesus was not religious either. Well, I, 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 I don't go to church and, and I, I believe there's a higher power, power. I'm just spiritual. Well, the devil's spiritual. You got to be specific, brother. You got to be specific. 
sister. He said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. But if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my father who is in heaven. He wanted to make sure you understood what father he's talking about. The one that's in heaven. The title of this morning's message is Delivered from the Untold Story of You. Some don't need to be delivered from drugs anymore. Some don't need to be delivered from alcohol anymore. Some don't need to be delivered from a broken heart anymore. They need to be delivered from themselves. They need to be delivered from the way they see themselves. Because if you see yourself a certain way, you'll act a certain way. You'll talk a certain way. You'll think a certain way. And you'll perform a certain way. Mm. I got one more scripture for you. And then I'm going to pray. I believe it's one more. Yes, one more. Turn with me to Revelation 12 and 11. And I'm going to talk to you uh, uh, about the importance of being delivered from the untold story of you. Revelation 12, 11, in the Amplified, uh, I, I just was quickening my spirit of a dream I had this morning. And uh, this dream was broken up because I had waking up in the wee hours in the morning to reposition my pillow and uh, go to the restroom and then I went back to bed. Then I picked up the dream from where I left off. But First Lady and I were in a, a new property and there were a lot of people there. And in a natural, we don't have a lot of people in our circle. And there's a reason why. Because you'll become like or be influenced by the five people you spend your most time with. And you spend most of your time with sinners, guess what? They'll pull you out of your place of grace. If you spend your, uh, uh, most of your time around the five people who are the most on fire for God, it will make you step your game up. Are you listening to me? And I don't, and nowadays it don't necessarily mean in the company of, in the physical company. It could be who you talk to on the phone, who you conversate with online, who you spend most of your time around because they will either influence you or you will influence them. Anybody who has an eye problem, and when I say eye problem, I'm not talking about physical eye, I'm not talking about sight, I'm not talking about uh, natural blindness. I'm talking about, well, I did this and I did that and I did this and I did that. And there's never any room for the Lord help me so-and-so or God bless me to do so-and-so. You open yourself up to destruction because the Bible speaks of a hearty spirit and pride coming before you fall. Are you listening to me? You've ignorantly confessed death at some time in your life, all your life, defeating yourself without even knowing it. I'm going to help somebody tonight because you think you've got this part of your life together, but I want to show you where you need to, to let the Lord help you. Why you say, let the Lord help me? Well, you have to let the Lord help you because he said that whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. What does that mean? Okay. Whatever you declare legal to operate in your life while you're in the earth, I'm going to tell my angels to allow it from heaven. Whatever you declare illegal to operate in your life, in the life of your children, in the life of your grandchildren, in the life of your finances, in the life of your, your, your social life, your personal life, your love life, whatever you allow, I will allow. That's the word. So you've ignorantly confessed some things. Because it says in the Bible, if any two of you on earth shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done by the Father in heaven that the Father might be glorified in the Son. Now, what does that mean? Any two. A saint and a sinner, if they agree 
The Bible says it'll be established. Why? Because you're activating a spiritual law. But how can two walk together unless they agree? So there you got a dilemma. So what ends up happening is you say things like this. If it ain't one thing, it's another. And you're not talking about one blessing, it's another blessing. You're talking about if it ain't one bad thing, here comes another. Uh, you'll say things like, Every time I take two steps forward, it seems like I get pushed three steps back. See, your vocabulary changes to that. And guess what? The enemy will make sure there's somebody around you that will agree with that. Even if that person is invisible, even if that's a demon, they will agree with that declaration that came out of your mouth. Why? Because you're activating the spiritual law that says, if any two on earth. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have none. Have you ever heard people say stuff like that? It seems like I can't catch a break. Oh, these cookies are to die for. <laughs> this job is going to be the death of me. My back is killing me. You ever have people talk like that? What are they doing? They're calling death on themselves. And if they do it with any kind of consistency, it will manifest. Are you listening to me? If that's your testimony... Anything like that I've said, you've made yourself eligible for defeat. Yep. And on that note, let me take a sip of my apple juice. But that's not the end of the story. If you want me to cancel any idle words you've ever spoken, go ahead and post, pray for me, prophet. Because we've all said something we had no business saying. Now I'm canceling what I just said. In reference, right now, I commanded to fall to the ground, die, and not produce any fruit in the spirit or in the natural in my life or in the life of my children or in my life of my family in Jesus' name. It's cut off. I just said it for a point of reference. I'm a very private person. Outside of ministry, you don't see me and hear me posting a lot about personal things unless it's going to uplift or edify the body of Christ sometime uh, I brag on our kids because uh, I want to show that it's not that I'm taking any credit for doing anything special all we did is present it before God and said God you've given us stewardship you've given us the privilege to manage their lives now that they're in your hands. We believe that no, no matter where we are in the world, that they'll be blessed. Are you listening to me? But even though I'm a private person, I've always wrestled with transparency. Some people didn't understand that they would have thought, and some still think, something that's not correct because I failed to respond to an accusation. But after you've shared intimate details of your life and been betrayed a few times, you'll be a little gun shy of speaking too much on certain things. Are you listening to me? I'll see you, Peggy. God bless you, sister. But use wisdom whenever you are sharing. When the Bible says, confess ye one to another, he's talking to his kids. He ain't talking to folks that will use it to tear you down, to use it to try to shame you, to use it for... He's not talking about that. There are secrets I'll take with me to the grave that someone shared in confidence. As a man of God, I've sworn before God that I will not use my position to utterly enrich myself I'm of the opinion of Abraham I don't want anything from anybody for my loyalty God has my loyalty are you listening to me just use wisdom when sharing and being delivered from the untold story of you I'm about to release an anointing to cancel idle words spoken, whether you spoke them yourself or someone sold that seed into your heart years ago. There are some women 
who are very, very loose and promiscuous because when they were young, they were told all they're good for is laying on their back. Are you listening to me? There, there are some men who are told all they're good for is being a street pharmacist. So don't even think about doing anything but selling drugs. And one day you'll either die or end up in jail uh, doing that. And just that's just your plight in life. But let me tell you something. There are some more diabolical things that were whispered into people. No one's ever going to want you and no one's going to treat you like, like me. No one this, that, not. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that Satan is a liar and the father of lies. Anybody that will say something to you and say something about you that God did not say about you, they're the liars. And let me go a step further. Everything that you think that you knew about you up until now is either minute or complete lie. I'm about to tell you the truth about you. The truth about you is that before you were formed in your mother's womb, your father in heaven knew who you were. The truth is before uh, you were streaming uh, and swimming uh, in the semen of your father, God the father knew who you were. And he set aside a purpose and a plan and gave you gratuitous gifts and endowments before you got here. All your life, you've been trying to discover who you are. And also all your life, the enemy has been sending you roadblocks and distractions to keep you from going straight to who you are. Are you listening to me? I didn't always know this, but I thank God I found out in time to preach this to my two youngest. See, the older ones had to go through some unnecessary bumps and bruises uh, and be beat up in the demolition of life to come to the same realization that Krista and King already found out. See, I got in their ear early enough from the womb. Are you listening to me? Krista King, Portia, and DJ, I was there during the birth. I even cut the cord on one of them. I think two of them, yeah. And um, from the time they were in the womb, all through the life, I've been speaking over them. I used to speak to them, now I speak over them. So as a result, not what I did, not what they did, but what God did. Both got college degrees, both successful, both gainfully employed. Neither one of them have children, neither one of them are married, and they're not looking to do either one at this time because they want to walk out the plan of God in their life, run their race and finish their course. I didn't get all that. Now, I got the word. I got church. But I didn't get the meat and bones that I'm giving you right now. So what I'm telling you right now is no matter where your station is in life, this is not the end of it. Now, you can do it the easy way. You can do it the hard way. And still end up in heaven. But from this point on, let's have the grace of God correct the things that we may have spoken into our own lives, remove the things that have been quietly sitting in the background, calling shots in our spirit that we're unaware of because the enemy hides out in shady areas. Let he who have ears, let them hear. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to, I'm ready to speak this word. I'm ready. I'm ready. I've seen the post that says, pray for me, prophet. I'm going to give some, a, 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 something to repeat, something to repeat, something to repeat. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I first say thank you, Father. For your word did say to enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. I thank you for trusting me with your word. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for redeeming my life from destruction. From destruction in Jesus' name. I decree and I declare that everyone that posted, pray for me, prophet. For everyone that posted, posted even do it, Lord. I decree and I declare a cancellation 
of every idle word they spoke it over themselves and every idle word that someone else spoke over them. In the name of Jesus, by reason of the anointing, I destroy every yoke, destroy every bondage that ties them to defeat, that ties them to the same old routine, new faces, same circumstance, new city, same circumstance, new love, same circumstance. I cancel it right now and I call crop failure on that harvest in Jesus' name. Now repeat after me. Said, I now walk in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. I confess him before men. He confesses me before the Father. Therefore, I am free indeed. And all that agreed and received posted, I receive. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what you got to look forward to. I'm going to talk about tonight about a new vaccine that's coming. You haven't heard about this yet. It's being discussed on the dark web. It's being discussed in the heavenlies. It's being discussed in the spirit realm. You've not heard it yet. Only a full, uh, only, a, only maybe a handful of prophets even are aware of it yet. I'm going to be one of the first ones to tell you about a new vaccine that's coming. Now, when the COVID vaccine came, it shut down churches. But when 9-11 came, it filled up churches. Let he who have ears, let them hear. See, Satan understood that when he brought a calamity on this country in 9-11, when the towers fell, folks were shook and they started going to churches. The churches would be packed out. So this time he put people in office who would receive of his doctrine of demons. So when the COVID pandemic hit, they legislated in many places, especially in California, that church gatherings were illegal. I, I assembled a team, uh, a Jewish uh, attorney from USC, uh, a Harvard Law professor, and a brother from Princeton. I had a dream team together. I was showing, showing to California for $100 million. You can't tell me I can't sing in church because it spreads coronavirus, but the strip clubs open, the liquor stores open, the dispensaries are open, and the like. Are you listening to me? I didn't have to go forward because they opened the churches up. But what I'm telling you is there's a vaccine coming. I'm going to talk about it in further detail tonight and you haven't heard about the vaccine yet because you haven't heard about the pandemic yet you haven't heard about this so-called breakthrough yet but you're going to hear it from me first this is uh, vaccine is supposed to be a new scientific breakthrough to combat cognitive design uh, cognitive decline excuse me Cognitive was the first time I heard that word is when I was uh, in my first year of college. I studied psychology. And um, cognitive decline, dementia, Alzheimer's, that type of thing. And this is going to be marketed as it's, it's a savior. It's, it's, it reverses uh, dementia. It does all these great things, right? But what this vaccine actually does is... Attack the part of your brain where you store faith. The part that's connected with your spirit man. Utterly melting away your memory of God. Melting away your connection with your Jesus that must be maintained. It sounds crazy. Tune in tonight for a message entitled... Did someone steal my God? You don't want to miss this. I, 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 I guarantee you, whatever you church you go to uh, this Sunday morning, no preacher will be talking about anything like that. What they'll be trying to do is get you to vote for Kamala Harris. That's what they'll be trying to do. 
Because many preachers have sold out the saints. They sold out the flock. Woe to them. Stop following blind prophets. And that's all I'm not going to say about that. There's a hedge of protection though for the, the saints, for the righteous. We're not to be afraid. And you can sell into that hedge of protection. Not because you're buying anything from God. But what it's demonstrating is that you've got more fear, fear of God than you have of man. You've got more reverence for God and more respect for the protection of God than you have in your own money. I'm asking everyone that would go sow a seed today into this word, into the word tonight. There are many who say, I'll sow, I'll sow, and it never hits the bank. That's between you and God because the Bible says it's better for someone not to make a pledge than make a pledge and not pay it. That's between you and God. I'm going to pre keep preaching whether you do or not. I'm going to keep living whether you do or not. The ministry is going to keep rising and going forward whether you do or not. But I'm warning you for your own good. The Apostle Paul said, it's not that I desire a gift, it's that I desire the fruit that would abound to your account. So you go to DwayneOmar.com, hit the donation button, and you do what God tells you to do. You go to uh, Cash App, dollar sign Dwayne Omar, and you do what God tells you to do. I'm done talking about sowing, but I'm going to pray this over you. For Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Jesus is confessing your name before the Father if you have said yes to Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that anyone who does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, not just their Savior to keep them out of hell, but their Lord as well. In other words, it's not a democracy with God. It's a theocracy. And his name is Theo. If you're that person, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner, Lord, in need of a Savior. And I know you paid the wage of sin through your death, burial, and resurrection. Come into my life and save me and I will speak to you as you show me how I denounce Satan and everything he stands for in Jesus name and father fill me to overflowing with the Holy Ghost amen last but not least here's a special prayer for women where I've been degraded, demeaned, and torn down by men. And in some cases, by another woman. No one's ever going to love you. No one's going to treat you good. You're worthless without me. That sort of thing. Let me pray over you. In the name of Jesus, I speak to your spirit, woman. Daughter of Zion, I decree and I declare that you shall fulfill the call in your life and that nothing can cling to you from your spiritual spouse or a natural spouse. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that the grace of God and the peace of God that pass all understanding shall destroy all works of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, I override what was said to you and I decree and I declare that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I decree and I declare that you are the blessed of the Lord and can't be cursed. You are the head and not the tail. You are the beloved and not the hated. You are the blessed and not the cursed. You are the strong and not the weak. You are the... That said the Lord, you are the apple of my eye. I knew you before you knew you. Return to your first love. Your first love. God and love yourself. Amen. Well, my time is spent. I got to get ready to go to the church. <laughs> yeah. Listen, when God says the Sabbath, keep it holy. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. Our Sundays... I remember, I'm afraid you remember this. Some of y'all remember this. You remember this, Peggy. When Sundays, the stores were closed. Where did that idea come from? It was closed because it was an observance of the commandments. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. 
I remember. I remember when things closed. And then it started opening up just till noon. Nowadays, not only is the stores, the malls, the liquor stores, the dispensaries are open on Sunday. Everything's open. It's just like there's no Sabbath anymore. Well, I'm going to continue to remain steadfast and immovable. No matter who goes left and who goes right, I'm staying straight on the path because Jesus is coming back sooner than you think. And he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Amen? Go ahead and go ahead and run through that spot cleaner, Christ, and let's get it popping. Amen? I'll see you all tonight. It's the Faith Building Bundle. Counting Your Blessings Journal by Arthur Sonia Lee Robinson. Keep a record of the blessings of God on your life as a praise and thanksgiving to Him. Also, your gifts making room for you. Coloring and sketchbook for adults with positive affirmations to build your faith. By Prophet Duane Lamar. Write the vision and make it plain. Arthur's Duane Lamar and First Lady are now on Amazon. The Faith Building Bundle from Prophet Dwayne Omar and First Lady Sonia Lee Robinson.